This autofocus 85mm f1.8 lens from Mica costs just $200, but how good is it? Well today I'm going to be testing it against the popular Sony 85mm f1.8 FE to find out. Like most things in life, you kind of get what you pay for, and this Mica lens is no exception. Essentially, it's just a modified version of Mica's older manual focus 85mm design, but this version just includes a stepping motor for autofocus. You can even see where they've just put a sticker over the hole where the focus indicator window used to be. <laughs> Are you serious? In terms of build, the Mica feels hollow and plasticky, whereas the Sony is made from mainly metal and is solid as a rock. Both lenses include an MF to AF switch, but the Sony also includes a customizable AF lock button as well as weather sealing around the lens mount. When shooting in manual focus mode, both lenses operate smoothly and neither lens has any noticeable delay. The Mica does have a slightly longer throw and a heavier rotation than the Sony, which means you do have to slightly over rotate your wrist to complete longer focus pulls, but honestly, it's still totally usable. But anyway, Anyway, when it comes to scoring, I think although the Sony clearly offers a superior build quality in terms of handling, both lenses do feel fairly nicely balanced on the front of my Sony a7 Mark IV, and therefore I think they both deserve a point for handling. Price-wise though, as we've already touched on, the Mica is significantly cheaper than the Sony, and most other 85mm for that matter, so needless to say, it gains a point for price in this contest. When it comes to autofocus in good lighting conditions, both lenses were quick to focus with no major signs of hunting. In low light conditions, neither of them showed any significant signs of hunting and they were both able to consistently find the target. When shooting wide open in high speed continuous mode, the vast majority of the shots taken with these lenses were sharp and in focus with only a handful being just marginally out of focus. So with both lenses putting in a solid performance so far, it's points all round. Switching over to video mode and both of these lenses were able to track George as he walked towards the camera even when shooting wide open at f1.8. When repeating the test but at a faster pace, again both lenses put in a solid performance with no issues. As for AF noise, the Sony is practically silent. whilst the mica does have a noticeable purring noise. When it comes to focus breathing, unfortunately both of these lenses do zoom in and out slightly as you rack through the focus, so this might be a turn off of videographers. Though it is worth mentioning that if you own one of the newer Sony cameras that includes focus breathing compensation, then you will be able to activate this function to help reduce this effect, though it will only work with Sony lenses as this feature isn't currently available for third party lenses. So with a pretty faultless performance in this round, it's points all round for both lenses. In our bokeh test, somewhat surprisingly, the Mica offers slightly better results than the Sony, with nice Nice round orbs at the centre, which become slightly clipped to one side as they get closer to the edge of the frame. The orbs created by the Sony on the other hand start off slightly elliptical in the centre and turn into a strong cat's eye shape at the edges of the frame. In terms of general bokeh quality, the Mica even provides a softer and less textured blur than the Sony, and that means that when it comes to scoring, this budget option has the Sony beat for bokeh. In our lens flare test, the Sony just wins this one hands down as it does a much better job of protecting against ghosting and artefacting than the cheaper Mica. The good news however, is that both of these lenses do come included with lens hoods in the box which should offer some additional protection from this type of thing when shooting in harsh lighting conditions. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, both lenses are, well, piss poor to be honest and offer a super colourful result with a strong yellow tint at the top of the chart and blue fringing below the area of sharp focus. Now although these two lenses are kind of neck and neck so far, I really found that when shooting out in the real world the divisions started to become clear. Unfortunately the Mica just wasn't the easiest beast to tame and when shooting full length portraits I found that the AF would be slightly unreliable and kind of frustrating to use as it would occasionally hunt for the target when using my Sony A7 Mark IV's face detection and IAF. Now it wouldn't do it all of the time but it did it enough to become slightly annoying and it did slow down the pace of the shoot significantly as I constantly waited for it to lock onto our target. Now when looking at the images afterwards in Lightroom I was fully expecting them to be wildly out of focus and a complete mess to be honest but to my surprise the vast majority were focused correctly so at least I was rewarded for my patience and it wasn't all a complete waste of time. Oh and by the way if you are enjoying this video please don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up it really does help the channel to be found. 
thank you in advance for doing that. In comparison to the Mica, the Sony was, well, nearly faultless. Now, for full transparency, I do actually own this Sony lens that I'm testing, and I mainly use it for video work as it's smaller and lighter than my main Sigma 85mm f1.4 that I mainly reserve for portrait work. My biggest complaint with this lens is that it suffers quite badly from fringing, as we've seen in the test charts previously, and this does leave your images littered with a noticeable blue fringing or kind of haloing effect around your subject when shooting towards strong lighting, which really isn't ideal. But of course, the Sony isn't alone here, and as we've already seen, the mica suffers from this problem too. So if you're choosing between these two lenses, then this is just going to be a problem you're going to have to contend with. In terms of sharpness though, when shooting wide open at f1.8, the Sony is noticeably sharper than the mica, despite both of the lens charts being littered with that coloured fringing I keep banging on about. At the corners, although both lenses do soften slightly, the Sony again provides the best edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. When shooting at the lens's minimum focusing distances, the results are close, but the Sony once again creates a slightly sharper image. So first things first, before we start dishing out points for image quality, we first need to address the AF issues that we've seen on the Mica because as it turns out, it doesn't appear to be quite as reliable as I found in the control test. So I am gonna have to dock the Mica a point for photo AF. And then when it comes to image quality, it's pretty obvious that the Sony is the better option and so forth, it has to win the point here too. Though this is kind of less surprising because it is a big jump up in price. Now, although this does mean that the Sony wins this test and come on, let's face it, we all kind of saw that coming. I don't think that this means that we should write off the Mica just yet and here is why. Now, by far the biggest issue with this lens in its current iteration is the buggy AF problem, which to me just really makes this lens totally unusable. However, this does seem to be a firmware issue rather than a mechanical problem. And if I am right in saying that, then this would be potentially a super easy fix for Mica to make with a simple firmware update. And luckily, Mica have even included a micro USB port on the lens mount to allow you to update the firmware yourself for free by simply plugging it into your computer and installing the updates found on their website. So let's fast forward a little bit and let's assume that this bug with the AF system goes away and it's completely fixed and the AF works fine. For $200, I think that makes the Mica lens a totally viable option for anyone getting into photography or videography and perhaps are on a super tight budget and you just want a nice portrait lens. Sure, it's not gonna give you the best image quality possible, but for $200, you really can't complain. So Micah, sort it out.